This tattoo is very personal to me. The whole purpose behind the semicolon is I'm telling my story. And there were a couple times where I wanted to put a period and end the story there. But instead, uh, there was a semicolon. There was a pause, but it continued. And that's where the continue comes from. But my story isn't finished. Um, that's why I have the arrow moving forward. And when my tattoo's at my side, the arrow is always moving forward. Uh, my name is Todd Lynch. Uh, I live with bipolar, a general anxiety disorder, PTSD, and substance use disorder, which I'm in recovery from. Being a first responder, frontline worker, um, I would time and time again find myself uh, as a 911 dispatcher on the line with somebody who is in a severe mental health crisis. And I would have to maintain my composure, my calm, my reassuring voice throughout the entirety of that situation. Same thing when I was on the ambulance responding to people who were in the middle of crises. I had to be professional, I had to keep my demeanor, uh, but my mental health symptoms were unbelievably challenging to contain in those situations. So that's where a lot of the substance abuse came in, was getting me through that and allowing me to keep my composure to maintain. So instead of trying to deal with the issues that I had, uh, I went to the doctor and just pretty much said whatever I could to get whatever prescriptions I could. Uh, and I worked most of my career uh, like that, um, hiding my substance abuse in the background with a, a nice face forward for the public. Um, I worked at EMS for 12 years, I was a dispatcher for 10 years, uh, and then I got hurt. Um, when I got hurt, I didn't have anything to do, um, and I wasn't really treating my mental illness uh, symptoms, any of them. Things kind of quickly spiraled out of control, and it wasn't until I realized that I really need to treat these, I realized that after I was the response, I was the subject that they were responding to, I was the one in crisis, um, because I never addressed the issues I needed to until I had no choice. I essentially lost everything. Um, I was living in the Northeast, and uh, no one would speak to me because of the things I had done because of my mental illness symptoms and my substance use disorder. Uh, I had a, a phone full of contacts and not a single one of them would answer me. Uh, so my only choice was to get treatment, to actually legitimately get some treatment. Uh, the only facility I could find was in South Georgia that would take uh, my insurance as well as uh, treat the dual diagnosis of substance use disorder and mental illness. Um, I actually drove my car with all my possessions to the airport at Philadelphia and abandoned it, left it there with all my possessions and it got on a plane by myself. No one knew where I was or where I was going. Um, I ended up in South Georgia at the treatment center and uh, that's where I ended up with NAMI. Was, uh, in the process of getting that treatment. NAMI was introduced to me through the various presentation programs uh, and I was able to meet some of the volunteers and some of the more dedicated members uh, in NAMI. And they treated me like family. Um, they welcomed me in to their circle uh, and told me that circle could be as wide as it needed to be. They assured me that when I didn't think I had any friends, I did. Um, when I thought I had lost all family, I still, I still had family. When I first started down my journey of treating my substance abuse and disorders and, and mental health issues, I, I didn't want to talk to anybody. I sat quietly in the room. I sat in the back, didn't want to talk to anybody until I got to a NAMI Connections group. I sat down in that Connections group and I felt safe. I felt secure. I felt accepted. And I felt like I was with family and friends. And I finally started opening up and speaking. And I honestly, it makes me want to cry. Because that's so important to have that safe space where you can discuss all these things that you have to be a strong man and deal with, but you can come into the safe space and get it off your chest. 
and it's not eaten away, it's not taken home to the family. And that's, you can't put a price on that. I got a lot of education from NAMI. Uh, I also got, just in my exposure with them, um, a completely different worldview. Um, when I started hanging out and spending time with NAMI and doing activities and functions with NAMI, I, I started to realize that uh, I deserve to be happy. I deserve to be productive. I deserve to pursue the things I want to pursue. And NAMI gave me a lot of tools to do that. So I ended up uh, joining NAMI, working with them, uh, learning about the different programs in our own voice, sharing your story with law enforcement, um, peer to peer. Uh, and now I, I not only uh, take in those programs, I teach those programs, uh, share my story with others because as far as I'm concerned, we're all on the same road for recovery. Uh, we're just at different points and wearing different shoes. So if I can look back and say, hey, I hit that speed bump there, don't hit it either, because it might knock you off course, then that was a wonderful day for me. NAMI means everything to me. Uh, I wouldn't be here if NAMI wasn't around um, because it gave me a sense of purpose. It gave me a sense of direction. Um, it gave me family. It gave me friends. It gave me hope. Um, and it erased a lot of stigma that I had stored 